All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, or in this case, tonight, I'm going to be doing part three of the story, the gold digger story, which I've been covering in part one and two earlier today. And where things left off, our guy here, after many, many years, finally had uh, Jenny, his ex, track him down where he likes to have breakfast and the whole drama fest going on there, and him playing along by having a whole thing recorded. Now, beyond that, you guys know the whole story, so I don't need to go any further than that. And if you don't know where things are, just go back and watch part one and two. So, it continues on. He says here, so of course, Jenny turned on the waterworks, explaining how she was so sorry. Again, ho bag handbook. I made certain through my own completely fake tears and sobbing that the audience knew how hurt I had been when she cheated on me. There's no chance I was ever getting back together again. I then stood up, grabbed my phone, and said in a very loud and hurt voice, Don't touch me! I wiped my eyes and rushed out of the cafe, sobbing like a hoe bag at a prenup meeting. Bless my gender swab testicles. It's great to play the woman's role, if only I could have ex exited in high heels. So he's, put, he's recording all this to put on this big show so he can present it to get his restraining order because they wouldn't give it to him because he's a guy. I came back in the afternoon to pay the bill. The owner is a friend of mine, and we used this place a few times for pop-up gigs to promote the cafe. He asked me if there would be a second act, and I said, F no. No such luck. A couple days later, and another unknown number. This time, it was Jenny's mother. Oh, that's wonderful to hear from her again. Jenny's mother just wanted to see how I was. No apology for her crap behavior years ago. Just an arrogant explanation that I had to listen. Yeah, her daughter's single now. And I don't know if she has a kid, I forget. And now she wants you again because you have wealth. And remember how the mother acted earlier. And we all speculated the mother obviously was just like Jenny. Or still is like Jenny. Jenny was very confused at my behavior at the cafe and desperately wanted to talk to me. Uh, not my problem, asshole. Jenny made a terrible mistake years ago and would do anything to fix it. Uh, you tell me Jenny couldn't get any other guys or she's just going after me because of the size of my wallet. I explained there's no fixing anything. I reminded her of Jenny's gold digger text, her cheating, hitting, and generally crap behavior. I was clear I wanted no contact with either her or Jenny and that was that. I also made sure I got down on record yet again that Jenny was violent when she didn't get her way. And I might add, I guarantee you that she probably has gotten worse over the years. Her mom told me I need to reconsider as Jenny and I were good for each other and she was a different person now. I said, no, don't contact me again at end of conversation and hung up. I catch up with my cousin Raul. I pronounce this. R-O-U-L. Raul? Rule? I'll just say rule. Rule. Once or twice a week for breakfast at the cafe. Jenny stalked me at. But despite Jenny knowing where I had breakfast, one thing I was not going to do was change my lifestyle. If Jenny showed up again, I'd manage it, because here's another rule for life for my old man. When people act crappy, don't let them change your lifestyle. Their crap behavior needs to be managed or challenged, not accommodated. So don't give out what you like or need to do. Yeah, I agree with your old man. In this case, I had an ace in the hole. Rule was now a cop like his old man. Ah, oh, you have a police officer on your side. Then why the hell didn't you get your restraining order and have to do all that bullshit when, you, when your buddy's a cop? Surely he can pull some strings. Plus Rule, I'll call him Raul because Rule sounds weird. Raul it is. Plus Raul is a card carrying member of our whiskey club and more than knew just how loco Jenny was. Better still, she didn't like Raul at all. And after one of her famous tantrums, he had a sign made with, with an arrow on it pointing to her saying, Danger may contain nuts. Your gang is definitely funny, man. Raul and I had decided exactly what to do if Jenny showed again at our usual spot, and especially if she brought friends. A little bit of script writing over a brew or two can go a long way towards getting that much needed restraining order. And so it was. A couple days later, and in walked Jenny with her least agreeable friend from the Witches and Bitches Club. I love that name, Witches and Bitches Club. Raul spotted them first and pretended to call in Code Crazy to his dispatcher, along with a request for dog control. Jenny came over and sat herself down just like last time and said, we need to talk. This broad, I mean, give her this, she's definitely persistent. And she brings one of her hoe bag friends. Well, I certainly didn't need to talk, as just as certainly didn't want to ever talk to her again. And besides, I was having breakfast. Never interrupt a man eating. Especially probably breakfast. It's like you don't interrupt a dog eating. Still having Raul there was good. 
as he A, is a cop, and B, knows Jenny for the psycho that she is, and C, more than inherited his old man's outrageous sense of humor. Still, I had all those pre-prepared one-liners on hand. You know, all the things you wanted to say to your cheating partner, but didn't think until afterwards. I switched my phone to record as soon as Roll gave me the heads up. Once Jenny and Christine sat down, I went through my usual spiel again of being done with Jenny and wanting no contact, blah, blah, blah. As I spoke, Jenny continued to try and interrupt me, all the while becoming more and more insistent that I had to take her back, and she was so sorry for what she had done. She had learned her lesson and loved me so much. Did she, like, hack my computer for the Hobag Handbook or something? At one point, Jenny tried to tell me how girls are taught that when they're that they're the prize, especially when they're just becoming women. That's why she acted as she did, and now she was so sorry as she had been so immature. Well, there's one thing she's saying is truthful: being taught that they're the prize, especially when they're becoming the woman. Yes, they, that is true. Uh, just becoming a woman, I asked. I had to wonder what garbage article she had read and what bullshit what bullshit line that was from. I told her she was such a catch, she would have no problem finding someone else. We were done, and we were remaining done. End of story. Exactly. She was such a catch, why is she not going after some other dude? At that, Jenny got snarky, to which I reminded her, well, prizes have use, use by dates, and you've been handling out your booby prizes to everyone. Love those one-liners. That is good. That pissed her off and got a laugh from Roll. Yet the comment was provocative. But from my side, trying to trap me into a relationship I didn't want with the aim of using me as her personal ATM machine was plain despicable. Relationships are about trust, not one person taking advantage of another. Jenny trying to take advantage of me gave me the right to make fun of her. All she had to do was make, to make me stop was to leave me alone. Christine, her rude hoebag sidekick, then told me that I should shut up and listen for once in my life. <laughs> um, I have an idea, Christine the hoebag. Get the fuck out. There's some, there's some breakfast sausage over there. I'm sure you know what to do. Uh, well, that was surprisingly rude, but typical of her. She followed up with a lot of rude comments about how I had hurt Jenny so much by not talking her back, taking her back. I need to be an adult about things, stop acting childish, and let the past go. So, the shaming tactics. It's always the resort. And it's amazing to me, when people can't win an argument, or they know they're in the wrong, they'll switch tactics to insulting you. And it's amazing. Uh, not forgiving Jenny was immature. I need to grow up and get some perspective. Regardless, let's just say he did forgive her. He doesn't want to be with her. Well, that was surprisingly rude, but typical of her. She followed up with a lot of rude comments. I'd hurt Jenny. I read that part. My bad, guys. Uh, no mention of Jenny on her own cheating, of course. Well, at that point, with Christine being so rude, I told her quite generally to go fuck herself. Rude feminists like Hobag Christine always expect to be politely spoken to, even when they're abusing other people. A shock dose of her own rudeness works wonders they never seem to expect it. They then double, either double down or become flustered and shocked. Either way, it puts them back on foot. I told Christine she was interfering with my breakfast time, and that's a thing a good woman just doesn't do. what I tell you? Oh, how sexist of me. I blush in shame. But wait, she wasn't a good woman, was she? The last thing I was going to listen to was one of her salami slider telling me I had to get back with another. She said to me, how dare you? To which I replied, bless our whiskey session playbook, I dare regularly, often, with rather younger women than you. Nothing that will piss a woman off more than letting her know that uh, she's become obsolete and that younger, prettier women have replaced her in one form or another. It's just so easy to be spontaneously awful when you've joked all the lines beforehand. Raw was snorting with laughter, and Jenny was accusing me of failing to take things seriously and being so rude. So you're, I'm just picturing this cafe where people are trying to enjoy breakfast, and you and your buddy are there, and they come in and just bitch, 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 bitch. With all the yelling, we certainly had an audience now. And again, well, I'm going to say this. Any other restaurant, people, they would throw you out. But since your friend owns a restaurant, then no big deal. And the, and the pair thought they could continue to continue that crap in public, why not invite the public into the discussion? Never bear a comedian in a public space, it just makes things worse. I stood up like I would have for one of my stand-up sets and asked the breakfast crowd if it was okay for a former cheating partner to accost someone in a cafe, with the intent of bullying them and taking them back. You should have seen the combination of surprise, confusion, smiles, and grins from everyone in the cafe. Breakfast and a show. Most have been following the argument already and seem to be enjoying the debate, especially the staff who knew Raul and myself very well. 
Calling the public to participate really seemed to piss Jenny and the Hobet Christine off even further. I was making a scene, blah, blah, blah. Well, yes, I was. Uh, start this whole thing in public, and I'll finish it in public. With everyone watching, it was time to get the last really going. Going to the cafe for years, the owner is a longtime friend. We'd already seen Act 1 as he knew Jenny from when we used to come here as a couple. He gave me a huge grin and a thumbs up. Now I'm going to say that a lot of this seems a little far-fetched. I mean, this happening in a cafe and all that, but you just never know. And I've seen crazy things in life. And the owner of the place is his friend, so, you know, who knows. Uh, that made Hobag Christine even angrier, and she kept saying how rude I was for asking people who had no part in private business to become involved. Uh, okay, lady, then you're coming into a public place making a big scene, and now you're complaining about it being nobody else's business. Really? Raul then tried to calm things down with his I'm in control police voice, and Hobag Christine turned on him and told him in a very rude terms what she'd always thought of him. Is your friend on duty? Is he in uniform? Or is he off duty and they aren't aware that he's a police officer? Because I have a hard time picturing this thing going down with them if he's in the uniform there. And you know what I mean? Uh, Hobad Christine was totally mouthing off and told me the entire situation was my fault. If I had told Jenny about money issues years before, she would never have been forced to leave me. Oh, okay. Cunning, but not so much. She should have uh, never mentioned money. And trying to give the impression to everyone I had somehow done something wrong. She gave me the opening I needed, and I pounced on it like a hooker on a fresh condom. He says, oh, you mean my family's money that I didn't tell Jenny all about, because it wasn't mine to give away. There was a bit of silence, and then I said, so you're saying she wouldn't have been effing around on me if she knew my folks were rich. You can see by the look on, on Christine's face that she suddenly realized her foot was firmly in her mouth. One of the regulars watching started to cough Gold Digger into his hand, and there was a lot of snorted laughter. Now, we really had an audience, though some clearly thought this was one of the cafe's promo stand-up gigs. To calm things down, Roll stood up, held his hands up to the best police voice he could, and, and calmed the ride down manner, and said to the cafe, Kyle, you're not taking Jenny back because she cheated on you. I said, right. I can see the shit-eating grin on his face. He might have his police calming voice, but I, I could guess the lines that were coming next. He turned to Christine and said in his nice, calm police voice, You see the trouble is, ladies. You both had so much cock through you, you probably need re-sleeves. Re now, no man wants that, does he? <laughs> he could have had, he could have, you could have heard a pin drop. Then the whole place burst into torrents of laughter, gasps of shock, like we were at a Jimmy Carr stand-up session. I just about wet myself, laughing along with half the crowd. Christine turned bright red and tried to slap Raoul, but he just turned her, her turned her round bent. He just turned he just turned her round bent her over the table and handcuffed her. She'll be going to the station, he said with a straight face. So again, it was it was he in the police uniform or not? But she she's trying to slap a police officer. Of course, he's going to cuff her. Half the cafe were wondering where the hidden cameras were. The rest was laughing so hard, I think Mike got the best free promo his cafe ever had. Christine started to scream and cry, He's hurting me! Raul pointed to the security cameras and said, You're on TV, and there's a crowd who've just seen you assault a police officer. Stop yelling. When I uncuff you, you shut up and walk out, or you get a criminal record. Jenny told me I was the most awful person she had ever met. What she ever saw of me, she couldn't understand. Fine. I'm awful. Leave me the hell alone. I got my restraining order. Thank God. You sure had to go through a lot of shit to get that thing. I handed over all the old texts and, and emails to my lawyer, my aunt, plus all the latest recordings. My old man was where as usual, never throw evidence away. The only one who spoke up for Jenny against the order was her father, because he felt it would affect her if her workplace found out. Too freaking bad. I agree not to serve Jenny at work, not that she didn't deserve it, but because as long as she was still employed, she had less reason to make trouble. After the restraining order was issued, I had a long conversation with her father. He is a good guy. Now listen to this. He said Jenny suffered from a personality disorder, or as my sister, the clinical psychologist, said, she's just a spoiled asshole. But we aren't allowed to use those, those words nowadays. True mental illness requires therapy. Personality disorders are just shitty behavior that shitty people use to get their way. She's just a spoiled asshole. That's what it is. And she obviously, he said, was hot in college. So no doubt as a young girl, she was a very beautiful girl probably. And people told her how beautiful she was. And she got special treatment from 
literally being a little kid all the way up, which caused her to be this way. And her mother's the same way. So I don't want to hear personality disorder. No, she's just an asshole. And this father of hers, although she's his daughter and he loves her, is making things easy for her. Her father went on to say Jenny was in trouble financially with car and credit card debts, and he and her boss have been suspended for the last couple of months. Imagine that. She's up to her eyeballs in debt, and she's going for the guy with money. Their affair still wasn't resolved at her workplace despite the time that had gone by. The boss's wife still didn't know, and her boss was pretending to go to work in the mornings as if nothing was going on. Jenny hadn't done well out of the divorce. Jenny's former husband was a spender and not as rich as he had made out. His cars had been rented and he was always in hawk. The husband also had been cheating, so what they had was split 50-50, uh, but, but given both were spenders, there wasn't much to split. Jenny had also rubbed his face, his performance in bed for years. So, what did I tell you in the beginning of the story about people that don't have money but don't make everybody think they got money? They're up to their eyeballs and debts. They, they drive the expensive cars, expensive clothes, designer clothes, big house, this, this and that, just to look wealthy when they don't have shit. And people with money, a lot of times, I mean, yeah, there are people that have money and they flaunt it, don't get me wrong. But usually it's the children that people have money that might do that. But a lot of people that don't have, that have a lot of money don't flaunt it as much and they're loaded. Right here. That's why she's after this guy. Uh, he said that she actually did love me in a screwed up way, but he understood where we were done. And even though it was his daughter, I was better off without her. What does that say when the dad says, you're better off without my daughter? I also found out that he was now divorced, something that hadn't come up when I, we had talked before. His own remark years ago that Jenny was too much like her mother had set him thinking. Turned out his wife had been cheating with different partners for years, and Jenny had known the whole time. Oh my God. What do I say from the first episode that the mother guarantees a big cheater? And the daughter knew. Acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. The hoe bag acorn doesn't fall back far from the hoe bag tree. Jenny was probably his, but he didn't want to know. He wasn't the father, so no DNA test. Yeah, can you imagine that? Probably she wasn't his kid. She probably married this guy for his resources. What a total B, and I could and I could partially understand why Jenny was so screwed up. Don't make excuses for her, bro. His wife had taken him to the cleaners when they divorced. She got half of everything, but it turned out she also had been salting money away for years. She did a deal with him where she kept the money in exchange for no alimony. Still, the scumbag certainly made out like a bandit. He was now remarried with one kid, and his current wife was a good 15 years younger than him. I cannot believe this guy who got remarried after getting royally screwed over by his first wife. Some people never learn. But he said he has a younger wife, so I hope she's pretty. He hadn't totally rebuilt what he had lost in the divorce, but they were doing well. And these days, he was very R-pilled and up, up on content and red flags. His only regret is he hadn't dumped Maureen, his first wife, years before. Well, what happens happens, but uh, I wish this guy the best. Send him my channel. My old man said I shouldn't have used Jenny as my own comedy show, as it could have all backfired and I had risked losing Kathy. Sound to him like I hadn't really forgiven Jenny, even after nearly eight years. I should just end things quick at every opportunity. Regardless, she would have still would have been back, and you had to go through this whole shit sh shit storm so you could have all this evidence of her acting crazy so you can get your restraining order. He was right, of course, but hey, that's show business. That wasn't quite the end of it now. Now Jenny knew I had a girlfriend, despite the restraining order that resulted in a lot of harassment of myself and Kathy online from the Witches and Bitches Club. Well, how are you getting harassed online when neither you have much social media unless you're being unless it was email? In some total bizarre fashion, Kathy was a total B and had stolen and stolen me from Jenny. Total crazy BS. How did she totally? How she steal you from your ex when she met you years later? The only good news was it didn't break Kathy and myself up. She had her own experiences with a Chad years before, and knew what to, to what the extent the Jennies and Chads were willing to go. Why on earth would your girlfriend break up with you over a crazy ex from like college? I mean that sounds nuts to me. Fast forwarding time, he says, I was married a couple years ago, and a few weeks later, my car was keyed and egged. The paint job ruined. I immediately had my suspicions as who had done it, but as neither I nor the police had any definite proof, I let things lie and said nothing. Over the next year, a few hints confirmed my suspicions. A few comments and jokes that friends had picked up, but nothing that could be used in court. Yeah, we all know darn well who keyed your, and egged your car. And did I say how humiliating those STD tests were all those years ago? 
Well, a very strange thing happened a year or so after my car was keyed. Some public health clinics outside the United States have anonymous outreach programs for people who may have been exposed to STDs. For whatever reason, the partners of Jenny and those of her Witches and Bitches Club, who still have active dating profiles, receive free STD checking advice from what turned out to be a fake email address. <laughs> Apparently, the advice to all the wrong partners, including STD, signs and symptoms, and all the usual medical jargon, and included links to all the offending parties' active profiles. Oh, for God's sakes. That resulted in several relationships ending events as different issues came to light. I can imagine. I understand Jenny and her boss are now looking for new work and relationships, as is Christine. Well, could have happened to nicer people. I must say, I can't understand how this might have happened. I might ask our IT guy. Yeah, sure. For some reason, the suspected guilty party was Jenny's old husband. Go figure. Well, anyhow, there you go. That's the end of this guy's crazy story about the gold diggers and all that type of thing. So, guys... I hope you enjoyed this one. I know some parties seem a little far-fetched. Sometimes these things do, but hey, truth is strange in the fiction. And I'm glad this guy had fun with this girl, but this goes to show you guys, they always come back. And if you're doing well for yourself, success is the best revenge. But be prepared that people from your past are going to try to exploit that success for their own benefits. Just keep that uh, keep that in mind. But it's always funny, a good revenge story, and hearing that you're doing well, and the people that did you wrong aren't doing so well. And as I mentioned before, guys, as I do encourage you always to try to better your lives and improve yourselves, you start acquiring wealth through whatever means you do it, legally, I hope. Don't flaunt it. Don't show it off to the world. Don't be one of those types because eventually some people are going to try to exploit that from you. Girlfriends, uh, so-called friends, other people, family, you just never know. And it's best to keep in the down. You can enjoy nice things, but there's a certain point to just... Best better to keep your mouth shut. And you don't need to go around fucking limousine or driving a Ferrari and all that, even if you can afford it. Unless you have personal bodyguards and you don't really need that don't really need friends or family anymore because you don't you don't need them to, and you won't be taken advantage. But anyhow, that's enough of this story. So alright guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And guys, you got a great story like to share, definitely email to me, strong successful mail at gmail.com. Just be sure to give me some time to get to it, and I will if I can and when I get the chance. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.